right, hello guys. We're going to be going over our Halloween forecast today. This is specifically for the evening time. We're going to be going from 5 p.m. until 12 a.m. So this is going to be useful if you're expecting to have a commute between those times, if you're going to be trick-or-treating with the kids, or if you're going to be having some sort of outdoor activity like a Halloween party or something. This forecast, we're going to go over the temperatures, the expected low temperatures. We're going to go over our precipitation forecast, and then also at the end, we're going to take a look at our simulated radar for all of the regions of the United States. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Also, be sure to share this one if you do have any friends or families on your Facebook or any other social medias that you feel like are going to be doing stuff on Halloween that would find this video useful. This is going to be a very, very thorough video, and I'm very excited to present it to you guys. This was actually one of the hardest videos I ever made made uh, as I had to make the temperature forecast map I the draw, hand draw that and then the precipitation forecast it took a lot of time now let's get right into it we're looking at our temperature forecast first things first now keep in mind again this is between 5 p.m. and uh, 12 a.m. so from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. tomorrow which is October 31st until 12 a.m. on November 1st so really this is going to be the low temperatures between those times, and I have taken into account Western time, Mountain time, Central time, and Eastern time, so I've adjusted it accordingly. Here is the lowest the temperatures can potentially get. So basically what I would say is prepare, either if you're trick-or-treating, prepare your kids for these sorts of temperatures, or if you're going to a party or something, prepare for these types of temperatures. In the purple regions, we have two different regions of 20s being our potential low temperatures one for the Rockies out there from Montana down through Colorado and then one there for some of the Midwest from Missouri up through Illinois and Wisconsin and Minnesota we're going to be expecting potentially to be in the 20s for these regions now in your darkest shade of blue there we're expecting to be in the 30s you know from west coast all the way into the northeast this is going to cover a very very wide area there so if you're in that dark blue region you're in the 30s and then in the medium blue, or I would say a deep ocean blue color, you're going to be in the 40s. So that's from the west coast all the way up through Maine. So basically that covers from east to west. Then we're going to be dealing with 50s in that turquoise color, a lot of the California coast there. And then along the east coast there as well. And then last but not least, our green region, which is very small, only an area in Arizona. And then along the east coast, we're going to be expecting to only get down into the 60s. Uh, from 5 p.m. through 12 a.m. tomorrow. Now, the reason for all this is because we're going to have a cold front moving along the East Coast, which is going to bring a lot of precipitation, by the way. So stay tuned for that portion of the video. Uh, we're really going to see warmer temperatures to start for a lot of the areas from, you know, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama. But things are going to very, very quickly cool down as a cold front moves through and a lot of precipitation. So we're going to see a very drastic change. But by time we're at 12 a.m., the cold front hasn't reached the East Coast. So we will be dry for the most part for a little bit of the mid-Atlantic and then also a little bit on the warmer side. Now, this Halloween is actually going to be one of the coldest ones in recent memory. If you haven't noticed, there's a ton of 40s, 30s, and 20s on this map. Almost, well, every state is experiencing at least some areas getting into the 40s. And almost every state, I think with the exception of Louisiana and some of the New England states, surprisingly, aren't going to get into the 30s. But a very, very cold Halloween for the most part. Now let's get into your precipitation forecast here, and you can see there isn't any words on the screen yet. I'm going to reveal them one at a time here. So let's start out with the north central United States there. You can see we're going to be potentially experiencing snow showers throughout this area. Again, I'm going to show you guys simulated radar later so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. And by the way, guys, as I continue to show you guys this, in the areas that aren't colored in, we're expecting to be mostly clear for the most part. But there will be some exceptions, obviously, where we're going to have a stray shower, something, you know, some of these areas are going to be experiencing some precipitation, but it's just not likely. Now, for our Great Lakes regions of the United States, we're going to be dealing with a winter storm. You can see the areas in the blue. We're dealing with mostly snow showers in the lighter blue. And then in the deeper blue, we're expecting to be more persistent snowfall throughout the, you know, 6, 5 p.m. till 12 a.m. hours. In our purple regions, it's the same story. In the pink region, we're going to have a light mix. That's either rain changing to snow or kind of just a sloppy mix the whole way through. And then in the darker purple, it's just a little bit more persistent, like I said. 
Now, for the East Coast, we're going to be dealing with heavy rain in those green, dark green regions. Pretty consistent rain. There is some light green regions there uh, for the coastal New England regions, and then some areas in Tennessee and Kentucky there. That's where we're going to be expecting mostly rain showers. It's going to be very important to just watch your radar, obviously, throughout the night tomorrow as well, because, again, timing could be a little bit off, and you're going to want to just keep an eye on the radar and make sure you don't get too far away from your house while you're trick-or-treating and then, a, you know, it starts to rain or something like that. Just keep an eye on it. Now, in the red regions, the light red regions, we're expecting thunderstorms to be possible from upstate New York, New York City, uh, northern New Jersey, most of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and down through the southeast. And then in that darker red region, we're actually expecting a slight chance at severe thunderstorms throughout this area as the cold front that I was talking about moves through we could see some damaging wind throughout this area and thunderstorms just like the surrounding areas. So areas like uh, Richmond, Raleigh, Charlotte, a lot of uh, Philadelphia actually as well. So we have a lot of big cities here experiencing severe thunderstorms potentially throughout the evening and nighttime tomorrow. Very, very interesting. Now let's move on to that simulated radar. We're gonna start out with the Northeast and you can see on our first frame here, this is gonna be 5 p.m. So to start things out, we have thunderstorms throughout all these orange and red regions, obviously. So Pennsylvania, a little bit of New York, like I was saying, down through the Appalachian Mountains there. Um, we have showers throughout coastal New England and also you can see that mixed precipitation out there in the Great Lakes. We'll get more into that in a little bit though. Now, as we head towards the middle of the evening, I would say peak trick-or-treating time here, you can see our cold front very definitively there from Winchester, Virginia, down through maybe, I would say, Charlottesville, and then down into near Charlotte, North Carolina. You can see there's a big band of uh, rain there, maybe through Lancaster, Pennsylvania as well. Uh, so we have a very, very strong cold front there that's going to be leading to a brief strong thunderstorm line most likely for a lot of these regions and that's our cold front very cold temperatures behind it as well as you can see snow showers entering ohio kentucky tennessee regions like that now as we reach the end of the night this is going to be 12 a.m almost all trick-or-treating is done by this time but if you did go to a halloween party you might still be there you might be on your commute on the way home we do have a line that cold front line of thunderstorms approaching the east coast but not quite there. So it's still warm along the coast and then very cold temperatures behind it as we see snow showers for Pittsburgh, potentially West Virginia, uh, Cleveland, areas like that. We might be mixing in Cleveland though because those lakes are extremely warm right now. And then Buffalo, we're seeing rain. Uh, we see heavy rain up there for upstate New York, like I was saying, but mostly showers for coastal New England. Now let's move on to the southeast. It's going to be a very similar story. We're starting out at 5 p.m. We see thunderstorms popping up for Alabama, Georgia, including Atlanta, and then up through the Appalachian Mountains. Let's move on to the peak uh, trick-or-treating times, and you can see that cold front definitively there once again approaching the east coast. And then by the time we reach 12 a.m., you can see for Georgia and South Carolina, we have seen that cold front already pass, and a lot of Florida is experiencing a little bit of isolated thunderstorms there or showers. But for North Carolina, for the most part, we haven't really, at least in coastal North Carolina, areas like uh, Moorhead City, Elizabeth City, uh, as well as Virginia Beach and Norfolk, we haven't seen that cold front come through yet by 12 a.m. tomorrow night. Let's move on to your Midwest and Great Lakes. This is where we're going to be experiencing that winter storm. And by 5 p.m. Chicago, we're in moderate snow, according to this model, as well as a lot of the northern and western regions of Michigan experiencing moderate to heavy snow. You can see those lakes are very warm, so they're keeping us in rain for a lot of the regions. But a lot of areas are staying snow despite those warmer temperatures. But it's going to be really a mixed type event for a lot of those areas closer to the lakes, especially if you're on the east side of the lakes, as that's where the winds are going to be pushing those warm temperatures. You can see heavy rain there for the Appalachian Mountains, but we've already kind of talked about those regions. Now, by the middle time peak uh, trick-or-treating times, you can see a lot of Indiana there is experiencing moderate to heavy snow, at least the northern two-thirds, and then basically all of Michigan, with the exception of that southeast region, we're experiencing that's in the lower peninsula, that is. But we do see moderate to heavy snow throughout the state. And then by the end of the night, you can see the, even the eastern regions of 
Michigan have switched over to snow. So that's why we called it an icy mix for this region because we're going to go from rain to maybe sleet iciness to snow eventually. It's going to be a mess there in eastern Michigan and a lot of the regions in western Ohio, northern Ohio, as well as the very eastern regions of Indiana. Now, for your western United States as a whole, that's the south, central, southwest, and northwest. The reason, the reason I'm bottling all these regions up is because for the southwest and the south central, we're not really expecting much of anything. It's going to be actually quite nice for trick-or-treating or anything. Very, very clear. You can see we have that high-pressure system down there in Utah and Colorado. That's going to protect us from a lot of the precipitation. But for Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota... Not so lucky. Here by 5 p.m. Mountain Time, you can see that we do have moderate snow showers entering Montana and a little bit of North Dakota there. And by the end of the night, we see snow showers have extended all the way through Montana into Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota. Potentially even a little bit of northern Nebraska getting some of those as well. I think light snow shouldn't impact um trick-or-treating too much though thankfully I, th I would say rain is probably worse than snow for trick-or-treating since you're on foot anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video again be sure to share it with your friends and family on facebook to be sure that they are informed on what the weather is going to be like for halloween hopefully this was very thorough have a happy halloween everybody and i hope you have a great and dry clear weather halloween tomorrow